In this video, we're going to continue working on the Google Sheets long-term athlete project, and we're going to finish off our KPI report by adding these dotted lines to represent the team average for those tests. So let's get after it. Okay, welcome back. And as you can see, we are starting off with the sheet the same way we left it in the last video. And as a reminder of how far we got, we started to create our first long-term chart by creating our filter formulas to automatically pull out the data and score it so that when we visualize it, we are seeing the results in relationship to each other. And we're not seeing these wonky values like we have up at the top with something like a sprint and a bench press being charted together. Now, before we get started into this video, what I'm going to remind you of is if you are finding any value in these videos, if you could like and subscribe to the channel, that would really help me out. And if you could share this video and my channel, that would really help the channel grow. And it helps me continue to put out these videos to hopefully help coaches better visualize their data and deal with their spreadsheets. So with all that out of the way, let's get on to today's video. So the first thing that I want to add to this is an option for us to use these buttons that we've created down here to basically um, turn on and off our tests or um, turn on and off the team average, okay? So right now we have it built out that we can turn off our tests, but we wanna do the same thing now with our team average. So the way that we can do this is I'm going to create a new spot on my sheet here where I can start to um, pull out the team average values. So what I like to do is go team average include, and then my next one would be team average. Then my next one would be team average score. And then I'm going to do that one more time. So I'll probably just copy these one more time. And if you wanted to, we could just label these sort of one and that tells me that it's test one. And then I'll do the same thing for down below. I'll just label it two. Um, sorry, fix that. Two and two. So the first thing that I want to pull out is whether or not we actually even want to include the team average. So what this is going to look like is I'm going to have this equal to the actual cell where we're selecting whether we want to show the team average or not. So in this case, it's true. But if I were to turn this cell off on under team average and I don't want to show the team averages anymore, now it's going to be false. Okay, so the way that that works is when we have a checkbox in a cell, if it's checked, it gives us a value of true. If it's unchecked, it gives us a value of false. Now, I have it set up right now to show both of them either on or off at the same time. So I'm just going to copy this formula and paste it down here. It's giving me a weird color, so I'll just paste it up here. And now what you'll see is if I turn these off, these are both going to be false, but I'm going to have them turned on because I want to create that formula. Now, just as an aside, one thing that I like to do is I'm just holding down control here and I'll just color all of these cells in so that I know that these are basically titles and headings. Um, and then I will kind of bold this. I'm going to make the font a little smaller as well so that everything fits in those boxes. But that's just something that I like to do for my sheets so that I can tell what's what. Now, the second thing that I want to be able to pull out here is the actual team average. So what we're going to do is we're going to index all of the data from the team basically that matches our test and then we're going to take the average of that. So I'm going to type the formula over here so you can see what it looks like. So we're going to use an index and match. So I'm going to type equals index, open this up and if you remember all of our data is stored under the named range data. So I'm going to type in data and then comma, comma, it's going to ask me what column that I want to return. I'm going to go match, open this up, and my test is stored in B5. And I want to look for that in my titles, which is another named range that we created. And then false, close this off, 
close this off and hit enter. And what you'll see is it's actually going to return all of those values. Now, if I take this whole um, data set and I were just to wrap this now in an average formula. So if I type average at the beginning, open this up, close it off. Now it's just going to give me the average of all those values. So again, all we've done here is index match for the test and all of the data from that test. And then we're taking the average of that. So I'm going to take this formula and paste it under team average. So that's part one. So now we have our actual team average. I'm just going to center these so they all look nice. Now the next piece that we have to do is just create that team score like we did down here. So if we remember the formula, it's um, value minus minimum over max minus minimum um, times 100. And that gives us a value out of 100. So let's create this formula now. So I'm going to type equals. I'm going to put this first one in a bracket and it's going to be um, kind of my value. In this case, it's stored in F4 minus my minimum value for this test is stored in B6 and then divided this by the maximum score minus the minimum score and then multiply this by 100. So you can see now it gives us our score of 36.33. That is going to be our average value um, converted to a score. And we don't like all of these decimal places. So I'm just going to round this M round, open that up. At the end, we want to round it to 0 0.5 and close it off. So now it gives us 36.5. So again, all we've done is taken these values and converted them to a score. I'm going to lock all of these in and then hit enter. So now what I want to do is I'm just going to take these two formulas and I'm going to copy them and paste them down. And we're just going to edit them now to work with our second test. So again, now what we want to look for is we want to match for pro agility, hit enter. And we're going to do the same thing here. And instead of B, our test is now stored in F7 and these are now stored in column D. So I can basically change all of these B's to D's and it should work. And hit enter and there is our score for that. Now in the same way that we did here, what I'm going to do is create some columns where we can pull these scores into. The first one that we want is test one team average. The second one that we want is um, we want the actual name of the test and then team average. So I'm going to type equals this test and use the and sign quotation space team average score and then hit enter. So you can see it's giving us bench 1RM team average score. And I'm just going to shrink this text down a lot so that it sits in there. Maybe I'll just call this team average. I'll take the score out so that it sits in that cell nicely. So that works well. I'll center it, put it kind of to the top. And then we're going to do test two, team average, and the same sort of formula. So I'm just going to copy this, paste it here. And we're going to call it instead of B5, we're going to go D5. And there we go. And I'll just shrink this text again. And we'll go down to six. Ah, six is kind of small. So we'll do seven and seven. And again, I'll just center these and sort of put them in the middle of the cell. Now, I already know what color I'm going to set up my series. So I'm going to color these first two with a light blue color. And then I'm going to color these second two with like a lighter red color because I know that I'm going to make these series blue and red and I'll make the text white so it shows up. Okay. So from here, now it's just a matter of actually pulling out these values. So we're going to do a few things here. So the first thing we're going to do is check to see if we even want to include these tests. So it looks like this. We're going to type um, equals if 
open this up. And what we want to look for in this case is if F3 equals true, then what do we want to do? We want to check to see if there actually is a value under test one. And if there is, we want to return the team average, which is 257.2. So what this is going to look like is array formula. If you remember how we use array formulas, I'm going to open this up. I'm going to put an if inside of here, open that up, and we're going to look at B11 all the way to B. And if that does not equal blank, then I want to index um, F4. If it is blank, then return blank, close that off, close that off, comma, if the original check that we're doing, if F3 equals two, or true, sorry, if that's blank, or if that's false, then we want to return blank as well, and I'll hit enter, or close off the brackets, sorry, and hit enter. And what it's gonna give me is every time we have a test here, it's just going to return the value of 257.2. And that's important because when we go to graph this, every time there is a value, I want to have a value for that team average. So the second one, we're gonna do the exact same formula. So I'm gonna control C under bench one RM team average. Um, I'm gonna paste that in. And this time, instead of F4, we wanna return F5 because now I want it to return that actual score because if you remember from these, the score is what we graph so that everything looks the same. Now, what I can do here is I can copy this formula one more time and because we're still, we're looking at a different true now, so we'll look at F6 and now we want to return, look at C11 to C, make sure that there's values in there and if there is, then we want to return F7. So you can see now we're returning that score and we'll do this one last time and I'll paste that in there. I know I'm going kind of fast here, but now we want to return the score, which is actually F8. So now we have all of our data. So now it's just a matter of actually setting up these charts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight um, this, this one here, I'm going to hold down control, highlight the scores, highlight the team average scores, and I'm going to go to insert and we'll create a chart. And you can see that this is kind of a messy chart. So let's clean this up a little bit. The first thing I do is make this a little bit bigger. And what I want to do is go to setup over here on the right. We're going to change this to be a combo chart. And now let's set up our actual series. So if we go here, it gives us our data ranges. So you can see we have A10 to A21. What I'm going to do is just make all of these basically, um, we're gonna go D10 to D. We're gonna add another range, which will be E10, well, I'm gonna put these in order actually. So we'll go E10 to E, which is now the range for our pro agility. And we'll make our range for our scores, which is um, G10 to G and I10 to I. And the reason that I'm leaving these last ones open is I want um, Google Sheets to actually go all the way down the sheet so that whenever I enter a new value, it's gonna automatically add those scores in. So when I hit okay, it doesn't really change much, but now we've set up our scores properly. I'm going to take this title and hit delete. And now we're gonna set up these charts. So if I go to customize, I can go to my series and for bench one RM, I'm gonna make it a column series. I'm going to make it um, sort of a light blue. Well, we'll make it maybe this dark blue and sorry that's line color we want fill color line color i want actually off and my fill um opacity is i like to put things around 50 so that you can see things behind them and my line doesn't matter 
And then we're going to have data points and we'll add those in after. I'm gonna change the actual data labels in a second. So that's bench one RM. Let's do pro agility is going to be, sorry, a column chart and our fill color is going to be red. We're gonna make it 50% and we're gonna have data labels there as well. And then our bench one RM team average, if you remember, we made it blue. So I'm gonna make it dark blue. I'm gonna make the line dashed and maybe we'll make it just a little bit bigger. So we'll say maybe two. Now maybe let's try four. So that makes it a little bit bigger. We're not gonna have a data label. And then for our pro agility, we're gonna make that red to match. We'll make the line dashed and we'll make this four. So now you can see how our actual sort of chart comes together. We don't really need the dates because they're pretty self-explanatory and our um, label on the side here works pretty good. So we'll come back to this chart. We'll go back to setup. And what it's gonna ask me here, if I click where my series are, I can put add labels. So for my labels, I'm going to take the actual test values. So we're gonna go B10 all the way to B and I'll hit okay. And now it's gonna give me my actual score or my actual values there. We'll do the same thing under Pro Agility, add labels, and we'll go, instead of dates, we'll go C10 to C and hit okay. And there's my actual scores. Now if I go to customize, I can change these labels around just a little bit. Back to series, bench 1RM, data labels, position, we're gonna go inside end, we will make them custom, whoops, I turned them off. Inside end, custom, we'll make the text color white, we will make them bold, and we'll make the font Arial because it's a little easier to read. So that's good for that one. And then Pro Agility, we'll do the same thing here. We'll make, we'll make it uh, white, inside end, type, whoops, turn it off again, text color, white, bold it, and instead of value, we'll have custom, and that gives us all of our different sort of data labels. Let's do from source data. So there you have it, there is our chart, and looks pretty good to me. So what I can do now is I can control C this chart, go back to my actual dashboard and paste this chart in. So if I just size this properly and put it right in where my dashboard is, now what you'll see is I can put that in there and I can start to change my tests around and my actual series change and I can turn off my averages. So now it's just a matter of copying this over a couple times and remaking this and we will work through that in the next video as well as make a couple of modifications to the chart to make it look a little bit better. But I hope this video helps you out and if it does please like and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.